Hello everyone and welcome to our first ever Art Starts Explores, our province of play, which is our digital edition. My name is Kay Slater and I work at the Art Starts Gallery as gallery coordinator and preparator. Oh, I'm going to move this over. I am going to be um, live working in this mini gallery that I created um, for the next hour to inspire you to try different things at home. Um, because this is the first time we've ever done this, I encourage you to give us feedback, to ask questions. We also have our gallery manager, Leah Horlick, who's going to be here and she will be available to answer any questions. I'm mostly not going to focus on uh, why, so, so that I can stay focused. Sorry, I just noticed that the camera cut out there for a second. Um, I'm mostly gonna try and stay focused on making, um, but please ask questions, leave comments so that we can just keep getting better at this. Um, so this, this is the heavy talking part of the workshop where um, I'm going to run this very much like one of our uh, explorers work. Oh, it just keeps wanting to cut out. I hope, I hope we're still connected. Um, it, this is going to be run uh, very similarly to how we run it in Vancouver. Every Saturday from 11 to noon, we have a free family uh, art making workshop. And uh, so this is going to be our way of reaching out to families and friends uh, across the province. So we had the, if you've uh, ever uh, due to poor wireless, is everybody able to see me and see the stream okay? Is it cutting in and out? I'm just gonna wait for a second and watch the comments just to see if everything's okay. It's telling me it's trying to connect, so. I'm going to play around with a few different settings here. Maybe it's just I've got too many devices connected. So maybe if I leave this, apologies, it is our first time. So we're just learning how to make this all, all happen there. Okay, I answer comments, but that's okay because Leah is here. Yeah, it is cutting out, but we can still see the video. Thank you very much, Nadia. I really appreciate that feedback. Okay, so I've cut down on a couple of things that were connected here. Um, um, and, uh, and hopefully that won't be a problem going forward. I'll just, I'll work slowly. And uh, yeah, please just let me know if there, there are any problems. So um, getting started with the, the uh, Art Starts Explorers, um, there are three rules or three kind of things that we like to keep in mind as we uh, explore together. I'm gonna put that out. You um, have uh, trouble hearing or uh, understanding what I'm saying. So we're gonna look at the three rules of Explorers. First, we like to practice respect. Respect. Uh, the way we uh, practice respect is we respect ourselves by listening to how our bodies feel. If we're sitting in front of our screens, if we're looking up at the TV and we're following along and we get overwhelmed or just listening to somebody for a long period of time is too much, we listen to our bodies, we stand up, we stretch, we have a glass of water, and uh, we should respect each other. So if somebody else has had enough and they want to stand up, if your mom needs to take a call or your brother needs to go and play in another room, that's okay. We're going to respect them. Um, we respect our tools. So if we're sharing with our family right now and somebody else needs to use a pair of scissors, we wait for our turn and we use our words to ask them if we can use the scissors when they're finished. And then we also respect the land by acknowledging where we are. Um, I'm, I'm hosting from uh, unceded Coast Salish territory, and I want to acknowledge that I am an uninvited, that um, I want to practice 
um, respecting the people who ho have guarded and continue to guard the land, the nations that, um, that are taking care of the land that I'm lucky to be living on today. So those are a couple of ways that we practice respect. Next up, nothing is for keeps. So if you um, are going to make something today, we encourage you to, um, to, to not keep it, to not use glue, to not use tape, to really try to put things together that don't, um, that don't stay together forever. And when we're all finished, uh, if we took things from the recycling bin or we took things from our toy box, we put them back when we're finished because this is about exploring. Art making doesn't have to be about the finished thing. It can be about the making of the thing. And that's what we're trying to do today. And on top of that is no expectations. Oh, I'm getting really close to the camera here. I'll move that back a bit. No expectations. So no expectations means that sometimes when we're drawing or we're making things, if we have going to turn out, then it can cause us stress when it doesn't turn out the way we want it to. So we want to open up our minds. We want to approach everything we do today and anytime we do uh, art making with the, um, with the question, what happens if I? And if you know the answer, if you've already tried it before, then do something else. Try something that you, what will happen if I? Okay, so those are the three rules of explorers. Um, I'm going to turn up the music a little bit and I'm gonna get started. What I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to conduct this workshop with very little talking unless uh, somebody gives me um, a comment that I need to respond to, but mostly the comments are going to be managed if you're coming in later by our gallery manager, Leah Horlick and I'm responding to our theme and to the prompts. So I am going to pull this away. I'm gonna pull this away. Um, you'll notice in the background that I am going to, I'm gonna turn up the music. We are listening to SoundCloud's Creative Commons music. Creative Commons means uh, we have permission to use it. Um, the artists have said it's music, so I'm gonna turn that up. And uh, yeah, let's let's start making. Now I'm doing this all small with paper, and you can do this too. My little people, 
they're just toilet paper rolls. So if you've got any paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls, draw a face on it and you can make your own scene. But you could be doing this big. You could be doing this for your parents sitting in a chair and you build the scene around them. gonna make today just blue things no expectations just whatever's gonna happen I really like this shape right now just blue things things on the background lights because why not fabric around here So curious what people are making at home. If you're making something cool today and uh, you're okay taking a picture of it, we'd love to see it. I really would love to see what you're making from home. So if you feel comfortable having your picture taken or if you wanna take a picture of whatever you're going to be making, even if it isn't making framing stuff, I'd love to see what you're making at home. You can do that on our Facebook group at Art Starts or on Instagram. Uh, yeah, it would be really great to see what you're making. Oh, what's this weird shape? Um, I know, I've got some markers. Oh, only blue things. I have a blue marker. There we go. Just using blue things. So this is kind of a cool shape. There. Oh, there, there we go. So you can see I have one, one person in the center, one subject. And this subject is who we're trying to frame. So just like a picture frame, right? Just like if you followed along with our video that we uh, posted yesterday, if you make a viewfinder, you can make, oh, here, I'm gonna see if I can get the camera to, Oh. Do you want to focus on there? No? Oh, there we go. Okay. And so if you look through the viewfinder, it kind of makes a picture frame. And you can make these scenes that makes it look. That's more blue than purple. Okay, now about the purple. Kind of like this jungle scene that I'm making, I guess. I don't really know, I'm just trying different things.
look like I'm in a blue jungle. Actually, I'm gonna grab my bigger viewfinder. Right? I'm no longer at home. I'm no longer in a gallery. And if you've ever been in any of my workshops before, you know I love to crumple paper. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna cut out all these things, and we should definitely use them. Crumple, crumple, crumple. Crumple, crumple, crumple. We always want to ask permission if we're crumpling up something that doesn't belong to us, but when we're making art, all the things that we cut off, they become things that we can use. They become a new, a new thing. In art making, we call those ready maids. That means it was made before you even started using it. So if you're like framing in your house and you take your um, your floor lamp, that's that's a ready. You didn't make that lamp. The lamp was ready made. So for this one, I made. All these scraps and all of a sudden now they become part of the scenery and you don't have to rush right just whatever you can find if you're doing this in real life as well around a chair or around your toy right maybe maybe you're not using paper maybe you're using other toys music for a little bit this this is our first time doing this maybe I think maybe the streaming of the music in my apartment is what's causing us to have this internet hiccup so I'm gonna turn off the music and if that's really annoying or you get really bored without the music give us that feedback we want to know but there we go so that's me trying things only, only with blue and uh, yeah, I mean, I just used paper and some, some fabric, but if you wanted to uh, do this at home, you, as, I, uh, as I said, if you have some floor lamps, you could bring in the floor lamps. You could put some paper on that or some other fabric. Maybe you have a t-shirt that's blue that you could put over the light. Or if in the background you had a couch, if you sat on the couch and you put a whole bunch of things around on the couch, that were only blue, what would that look like? Okay, so that's let's use only blue. We were going to try, oh, how about, can we make our scene look spooky? make our scene look spooky. Hmm. Well, I think, I think I want a tree. I think I want a tree again. I think trees are kind of spooky. So I'm going to put my lamp back in there. If you're at home, how can you make your lamp look like a tree? some 
black cardboard here. time doing this if there's any problems if you have any feedback if you want to see anything in particular let us know we're going to be doing another workshop specifically on framing uh, in, a, in I think next weekend um, so we'll take that feedback and we'll uh, we'll try and incorporate it right away that, that kind of looks like a tree could we do to make it look spooky maybe some fabric okay I have that blue fabric what other fabric do I have I'm gonna go looking it through my apartment see what I can find what can you find some fabric what what will work okay I think this is big and gray so like if you had a window that you could cover or depending on the marker or if you have oh acrylic paint you could paint the window always ask for permission right but or, or just turn off the lights it's that make it more spooky? A little bit more moody. I wanted to really respond as much as I could to the themes without having too much around because you didn't know what we were going to be trying to do. Different things, maybe it won't work. And that's okay. It's okay if it doesn't work. Remember, no expectations, right? Number three, no expectations. Okay, if I bring this flower back, is that gonna be spooky? I mean, it's dark, but flowers are kind of friendly, aren't they? That up there, so it stays. Maybe some, maybe some eyes, right? 
tonight if you're ever walking through a forest. Whoops, here, I'll take that down to my room and talk a little bit. And if there are eyes in the forest. Because it is kind of like I'm making a forest, right? I think I might have forest on the brain. I kind of made a jungle with the blue. That's okay. However you feel. Maybe you just saw a movie. Maybe you just saw a movie that had a, a forest or a jungle or something. Or you watch something where people were flying. So maybe you're thinking about skies and you want to try and make scenes that look like you're flying. That's okay. Here we go. I made spooky eyes. Spooky eyes. All right, what happens? It's not perfect. Is it still spooky even though there's all this green here? I don't know. I kind of want to do grass again. But you know what? I don't have a color restriction, so I'll just I'll use the blue again. Okay, there it is. There's my spooky scene. You notice how I push the viewfinder forward and backwards? What does that do? What does that do to the scene? That's part of framing as well, right? This is, this is a frame. So when you're looking through your viewfinder, what happens when you bring it real close to the thing you're trying to and real far away? What happens? Remember, always what happens. Okay, what next? How about we try to spooky scene. Let's make a really comfy scene. We tried spooky. What's the, what's the difference between spooky and comfy?
I mean, comfy is going to look different for every person. What's comfortable to you might not be the comfortable to somebody else. So you can make this really personal. Maybe you don't like the sun, so this wouldn't be comfy to you. If you're coming in later, I'm just using toilet paper rolls for this. I've added a toy, but really whatever you can find. I think I want the rainbow closer together. I just asked, what will happen? What will happen? I don't know. You have to ask and try. Because if I already knew, then it's not really experimenting. It's not really exploring. There we go. Look through my little viewfinder. That's important too, right? Change the orientation. I always like to hold it like this, but if you made your viewfinder square or maybe another shape. Drew a pillow. Oh, you know what? I was going to use my knife, but let's keep things safe. So I'm going to use my scissors instead. Use in the scene as well. More pillows, really comfy. Oh, it's stuck to itself. Obviously, my definition of comfy involves pillows. Go to be achieve comfy. Does that look comfy?
Remember, I'm just trying different things. Yours can look completely different. Okay, I think that turning off the sound or not talking as much has caused it to not hiccup quite as much, but um, I'm just going to talk as I transition to the next one, which is, I said, oh, what can we do to make the subject look tiny? So what do I mean by subject? I mean the one thing that we're trying to focus everybody's attention on. That's the point of framing, right? So I'm going to move all these things out. Okay. So the subject is usually the thing we put in the very center. It doesn't have to be. I really like this backdrop. Maybe next week I'll make a bunch of different backdrops.
Okay, so I want to talk about something called infinity. And infinity means forever, means going on forever. And so you can see here I made the stem and I, like it looks like I'm making a flower here, right? Like two leaves and a stem. I'm not going to put anything on the top here because when we look through our frame, it gets cut off. It goes off and so our imagination fills in the other things. So I don't actually have to put that in because the flower, the rest of the flower exists in, in infinity, right? Everything past the frame. That's kind of why it's cool to be able to put things around your object or around your subject because that's how using infinity is kind of like your imagination. Your brain fills in all that extra information. So yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put anything up there. Thing I want to talk about is something called depth of field. And depth of field it was when I was talking about that whole close, far away, that can also affect how things look. Put this really close. already said I really like to reuse things. So why can't the sun become a flower? Sad flower. Bring my bunny back in here. Whoop. Run away flower. There. Lean on the bunny. Reuse all the things.
Okay, the other way is to bring in some ready-mades. I know what I want. Okay, does that completely cover my cool flower? It does, okay. By bringing in something really big and that's kind of what I was trying to do with the flowers right the flowers are really 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 big but if we're working with toys and the toys are already small why don't you bring in something big that already exists another example of a ready-made right it was already made we didn't make it it's a ready-made and then when we look through that frame whoa All right, so today we tried to make things tiny. Move my boot out of the way. Move flower out of the way. We used only blue things. We learned about depth of field, which is just this direction from where you're looking. So from if the frame is start and the background is end, all these things in between allow you to create depth. And then we made a comfy scene. And we made a spooky scene. Did you try making any other kinds of scenes? We'd love to see them. If you want to upload your pictures to us or just tell us about it, we'd love to hear uh, in the comments that you made something or you tried something. Even if you just watched, that's great. Let us know. So I'm going to make, for the last five minutes, just a bunch of different scenes here, no theme. And um, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who came in and watched today. I know we're having some Wi-Fi issues, but we'll get that sorted out by next time. And if you haven't had a chance to check out our video yet on framing, that's on our Facebook page. Um, it gives you a bit more information about the Explorers program as well as making a viewfinder, which is a great activity and is just a great tool to have with you to teach you how to see things through a frame. Cinematographers, people who make movies and photographers, we explored the theme infinity. So everything that you can't see past the frame and the tricks, you can work with that and also just moving the viewfinder back and forth. Okay, that's enough talking for me. I'm gonna make for the last five minutes and we hope to see you soon.